Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today to make a quick and easy card using some scraps and a stamp set from the Not Too Shabby Shop. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Recently, I shared with you that I am on the design team for the Not Too Shabby Shop, and I'm so excited to be back today with my very first video as a design team member. For today's card, I'm going to be using some scraps from another project that I created to make a new card with the Easter Wishes stamp set, and I'm going to be doing some masking. Before I get started on that process, I'll go over the main products that I will be using, but as I start my voiceover, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my papers today, I will be using some scraps from the Not Too Shabby Dots for Spring collection. What I like about this paper pad is it is double sided, there are great spring colors, and it's made up of polka dots, which is good for just about any card. On one side you have larger, kind of normal sized polka dots, and then on the back is a tinier polka dot. I just think this is so fun, and you could just flip flop that and mix and match all of the dots and the colors. For my stamps, I will be using the Easter Wishes stamp set, and I will be using these three eggs and the Easter Wishes sentiment. I am going to do some simple masking today, along with some simple coloring, using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. I got out three colors that I thought matched the papers nicely, as well as my clear blender pen. Because I will be doing the masking, I got out my roll of masking paper. And then I did already pre-cut all of my pieces for my card. For my focal point, I have a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is three by four and a quarter. And then for my mat, so I can still see some of that pattern paper behind it, I got out a piece of 17 pound vellum, and this is three and a quarter by four and a half. For the main card itself, I cut a scrap of white cardstock that's four by five and a quarter. This could be any color cardstock though, I just needed a scrap because I'm going to be building a background with my pattern papers on the top of this. And then I have a top fold card base. Let's get crafty! Because I want to give my ink a little extra time to dry today, I'm going to start the card by doing the stamping. The first thing I do is create a mask for each of the eggs. I just cut a small piece of that masking paper and stamped each of the eggs in that VersaFine Onyx Black onto that. Now if you don't have masking paper, you can always use a post-it note or a piece of printer paper. You just might have to add some removable adhesive on the back when you're doing the stamping. Once I had the mask made, I brought in my tiny scissors and I cut each of those out. Once those were all cut out, it was time to do the stamping for the card. The Strathmore Bristol Smooth does have two sides to it. One is a little bit rougher, so I use the more smooth side for my stamping. To try to help get my eggs in a straight line from left to right, I did bring in my plastic T-square ruler and use that as a guide for the bottom of each egg. For the first three eggs, I had those tilted slightly to the right before I inked those up and stamped them. Now because the paper does have a texture, I did stamp each of the images twice onto that cardstock. Once the first round of eggs was done stamping, I cleaned those off so I could place my masks down and stamp some eggs in the background. I won't be using the middle egg stamp for this. I will be using the two on the outer side, but I'll be swapping them left to right. Once I have those set up, I did accidentally pull off the masks with the stamps, but it was easy to just place those back down 
ink up my stamps and once again stamp those twice. Now I just love the reveal when you do masking. I did make sure to hang on to my three egg masks because the back of them are still sticky and I can use those for another project. To finish the stamping on today's card, I got out the Easter Wishes sentiment from the set and centered this below the right three eggs. Once again, this got inked up and stamped twice. Once this was done, I did set this piece off to the side while I finished the card. Next up was to make that scrappy strip background. I brought in all of the scraps that I was going to use for the card and the larger ones which were about two inches wide, I trimmed these in half at a slant. For now, the skinnier ones I'm going to leave as is just to fill in gaps later on. Once my big pieces were cut, I added adhesive to the back of them, trying to cover as much of the area as I could with my ATG. Then I placed these on the background on that white piece of cardstock until it was filled up. I just like kind of the zigzaggy kind of sunray almost effect of this background. Now you'll see here at the end I did have a couple spaces left so I brought in the purple skinny strip to fill those up. Once all of the pattern papers were in place, I brought in my scissors and I trimmed off the excess around that white card stock. Since this piece was all ready to go, I went ahead and adhered it to the front center of my card base before moving on to the rest of the card. Now it was time to do the coloring. I got out number 80 violet, number 52 bright yellow, number 41 light green, and then my colorless blender which is $9.99. Now even though my image did have some extra time to dry, I did bring in my heat tool and I heated this up for probably about 15 seconds just to make sure that ink was nice and set. When I color, I like to keep it nice and simple, and that is why my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens are probably my favorite way to color images. I can get shadows or shading using just one color. The way I do this on the flower, I colored about half of each petal with the orange, and then I spread the color out into the entire petal. When I came back in with the orange, I once again colored that inner half, and this time when I brought in my blender pen, I only blended out where the dark and the light met, just so the center of that flower still has some dark shading on it. I did this same thing for the ribbon, coloring in half of each side near the flower, blending that out, and then adding some shading. Now for the center of the flower, I did just bring in my green marker and just colored it in a nice solid green. While I work on coloring some more of the Easter eggs, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. If you do want to see more detail on how I color the eggs, make sure to stop by the Not Too Shabby YouTube channel today where I go over the coloring a little bit more in depth. I will make sure to link that video in the description box below. For today's QOTV, I would like to know what is your favorite way to color? Do you like Copics? Do you like markers? Colored pencils? Other? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure that you include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered and want me to see it. For myself, if I'm going to use markers, I do prefer to use these Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. I just think for myself, I can do better when it's with a single marker per color, and sometimes I switch it up and maybe use a couple shades. My second favorite way to color is probably colored pencils blended with Gamsol.
Now I did mention before that these eggs probably were sitting on something, but on my card they just looked like they were hanging out in space. So I brought back in another zig marker. This was 97 pale gray. I did just a little line below each of the eggs where it might be touching the table or whatever it's sitting on, and then I blended that out. This just once again helps it look so these aren't floating midair. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to finish the card. I started by adding an adhesive to the back of my stamped focal point, and this got matted with the vellum. To add a little bit more dimension to the card, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and added three pieces of this to the back of the focal point. Once I pulled that release paper, this just got placed centered on the card front. To bring in a little bling and to take up some of the white space on my stamped image, I brought in some sequins that came with my not too shabby goodies and I'm going to be placing five glue dots where I want these sequins to lay. Now this is probably the hardest thing for me is figuring out where these sequins go. I usually try to use an odd amount. If I do three, I usually do a triangle. If I do five, I usually let them flow from the upper left to the bottom right. Now I wasn't sure which purple to use because both of them that came within the sequins were so pretty, so I used three light ones and two dark ones. Now you'll notice when you see the finished card, the sequins have moved a little bit. I just thought they looked slightly better this way. Here are some close up looks. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.